Hello and welcome to this brand new video on Checkpoint Firewalls. Um, I've previously done um, a video which I uploaded to YouTube where I just had terrible audio. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it was appalling uh, when I listened to it back just before I made, started making this. Um, I, you know, I'm really, really just surprised I even uploaded it. Um, and I'm really sorry to everyone, it really struggled. Um, and I really appreciate your feedback on that. Um, to be honest, I, part of me just thought, oh, it's okay. But actually, you know, I can see where frustration might arise uh, in, in trying to in trying to understand what I'm actually going on about. So I thought, I've got myself a brand new machine, um, which hopefully is slightly better. Um, I've also got myself a headset, you know, with a proper microphone. So hopefully this is a bit clearer. Uh, what I thought I would do is do a brand new video series, uh, which I was planned to do. However, I kind of got put off because I didn't really have the right kind of hardware and stuff. So better position now so I thought I'll make a brand new series on the latest version of software and do things properly so um, this video is basically an introduction to Checkpoint it's on R77.2 or 20 which is the very latest software from Checkpoint available I think on Smart Center download so um, if you are building a lab on the latest software this is probably what you're going to be going through so this video just covers basically installation so I'm not going to do anything more than that apart you know all I want to do is create a virtual machine you know get it up and running get it operational and then in the next video I'll start to configure networking routing and the, you know the layer 3 type stuff then we're going to look into smart dashboard and configuring our rule base but I really want to kind of do it in a granular approach um, and uh, you know an episode type way of doing things so the first episode being this one uh, is just the installation so quickly go through what I'm working on so I'm on a MacBook Pro I'm running VMware Fusion which is going to be the software I run this lab within um, I'm probably sure a lot of you are going to be doing the similar type things so you might be using VirtualBox or VMware Workstation any, you know any type of um, hypervisor type software if you're lucky enough to have a big server somewhere with ESX running great it's probably a really cool lab to uh, to be working on for me it's just very simple it's a, it's a professional version um, I don't really know what the difference is between home and professional or whatever, but um, yeah, I'm sure there's something, it's pro you know, it's probably, pro I mean, apart from the cost, obviously. Um, so yeah, I just want to quickly run through what I've done so far. So what I haven't shown here is is me obviously starting from scratch, but I've essentially got uh, a USB drive with all my images of various different things. I've selected my R77.2 image, which I downloaded earlier, and I've created a new virtual machine. Now, settings-wise... Um, I haven't changed a lot. The only thing I've changed is I've given it two core and two gig of memory. For the what I'm going to be doing, which is a standalone deployment with the security gateway and the management server running on the same box, this is reasonable. If you start to chuck traffic through it, probably not so reasonable. Um, I would probably say two cores is okay, but you know, two gig of memory, probably you want up that to at least four. It depends depends really on what you're putting through it. Um, you'll hit the constraints of the of the the actual host before you you know you outdo this so um, that's what I've done for the actual compute uh, let's have a look at network adapter now I originally thought oh, I'll go with a private to my Mac but then I realized I don't really know what address it gives so I'm gonna actually go with a custom VMware network adapter uh, I've given it this subnet 172.16.168.0 uh, I'm assuming it's gonna give my PC dot one so I will give my management interface on the checkpoint dot ten um, hopefully that will work. What I have done is allowed that subnet to be natted through my connection. So in theory, the checkpoint could access the internet. For this episode, we don't really need to worry about that. So I'm going to select VMNet3, um, close that off, and hard disk. I changed it. It was originally 8. Uh, I mean, I don't really know. Really, I don't need to show you that. I'm just going to put 100. Now, what you put on this is, is up to you. There is a minimum, obviously, so I'll link. I'll put a link to that. But you know, I want enough for logging, and you know, I, I do a lot more sort of evaluation on this. So I, I like to collect a lot of logs. Um, I'm not going to play about with the partition scheme. You'll probably see that the largest partition on mine is going to be for backups. It, reality is, you might want to adjust that. So you might have your log, your var log um, directory is your largest partition. Um, for this, it's, it's you know it's just a quick video. I'm probably going to scrap this afterwards. So that's what I've done settings-wise. I'm thinking we're good to go. So I'm just going to fire this up. Um, installation's dead simple. You can run it from the local drive. Uh, you know we're going to install it. We don't we don't need to worry about that. Um, now the installation is 
pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's a kind of next, next, next. You know, I, I put a password in, select the roles, things like that. So really straightforward. There's a point where you take over from sort of this is like you know you're on your you're on your uh, your monitor in the in the actual comms room uh, where you then configure an IP and you go and configure back from the web GUI. So this is basically the uh, the just amount, the just the right amount of stuff to get going. You can actually do an unintended um, installation. There's an actual checkpoint tool. Again, I'll try and put a link to that. Where I think on our, it's either our 77.1 or point two where they actually allow that. So you can actually configure the management IPs and things like that. And basically, drop the USB in, boot from it, and away you go. Um, for a lab, it's probably overkill for me to do that. By the time I've set that up, it's you know, I probably would have done it. So the installation. I'd it's relatively quick. I am running it off um, an external drive, so it might not be as quick as as in real life. But um, to be honest, this is an this is an SSD, so it should be relatively quick. So do want to continue? Hope so. Uh, select your language. So Great Britain. This is the partition scheme I was on about. So disk size is 99. Swap 4 gig. Um, which is good. It match physical plus two, so four. Yeah, it's cool. System root eleven. Yeah, logs eleven. I'd probably adjust that in a production site, but for this, no problem. Uh, and then you've got a nice fancy um, layout of actually what's going on. So I'm happy with that for this. Um, password. You want to create a password for the admin account. Now I think there is complexity on this, so I don't think you could just put admin. So let's try that. I don't think you can. Anyway, I'm sure it's it'll reject it. Yeah, so I don't think you could just put like FW admin. I think you actually have to have some complexity. So I'm going to put a reasonable password. I don't want to divulge it because you never know. I might be using it somewhere. Um, management interface. So interesting. I'm just going to put uh, 172.16.168.10. Gateway. I'll leave it as that, to be honest. I don't know what the gateway is, actually. I'll have to check on, uh, on mine. That's fine. That's fine, okay. And here comes the actual installation, so the core operating system gets installed at this point. Um, it's going pretty quick. Um, hopefully it continues like that, otherwise I'm going to fill a lot of white space <laughs> with my with my voice. Hopefully, um, please give me feedback if this is as bad audio-wise, then I'll need to review. I need to get a better, better um, microphone, but hopefully this is clearer. I'm going to upload it, I'm going to do my best to make sure that it's, it's in HD and um, it's clear as, as you know as clear as can be so that's pretty quick install actually I'm quite impressed with that um, wow I was expecting this to take ages normally I'd sort of blank that out but um, yeah I guess that's what happens when you couple a PCIe SSD with a USB 3 caddy um, quickly go through what I'm proposing with this installation so it's my favourite for labs standalone, so I'm going to deploy the security gateway and management server as one unit. Um, so the idea being this machine will run both of those services. Um, you tend to see that on the lower end, so from lab to like low end campus type environment. So some of the like like a 4200 appliance, which is their physical appliance, runs in that type of example. Now I've deployed those and actually recently realised how poorly it performs because it's like a two a two core box with like four gig of memory when you chuck 300 users behind it honestly it's it's not the best solution so if you can go for a distributed deployment where you've got a separate management server and a separate gateway everything then is completely independent it's, it's loosely coupled so you know you can reboot your management server without rebooting your firewall or whatever so um, we're doing standalone in this because it's a lab that's about it so that was the installation complete I was really impressed with that um, Fingers crossed, once we reboot that, um, we can actually do something with that. So, close that off because we don't need that. Um, HTTPS. God, that's just like subnetting, old habit. Um, 68.10, I think we said, didn't we? So, let's fire that down, wait for that to start. It's probably going to take longer to start than it did to install. Um, so yeah, this will just cover the real basics, so we're, we're not actually that far from completion, so we will have a quick look at the web GUI for configuration, and then, there we go, so that should be good to go, fingers crossed, ah, there we go, brilliant, 
on Windows that would have just completely not worked and it would have been something ridiculous but that actually looks really good so I'm going to proceed you're getting certificate error naturally because I've gone to it by IP I've not uploaded a certificate so it's really not an issue that's a self certified um, a self generated sorry by the, the checkpoint so there's not really much you can do about that going to log in with those credentials I made so admin and your super secure password I don't want to save that log in so this is your configuration wizard now we're at a point where this is where we start to understand the roles that we're going to be running on this this device so when I said about standalone this is where we configure it this is where we configure you know all the very basics DNS time things like that we're not at the point where the checkpoint is ready to be deployed to from a rule based point of view so I'm going to go through here's where you can do your you know recovery so if you've got snapshots things like that we're going to do a completely fresh configuration so we're going to carry on happy with the IP don't need to worry about IPv6 host name again I'm not too bothered about that domain name let's keep it as uh, let's put ollie.local primary DNS I don't have a I don't have a local one probably want to change that for later so I'll just put some external ones these are actually Google proxy again don't have one time could use the uh, the online ones I'm assuming that's taking it from my machine fine with that for now right Security Gateway or Security Management. Multi-domain server is, um, I guess, is the name for Provider One, uh, which is essentially a management server that, like a a provider would use, you know, managed service type provider where they have multiple customer gateways and management servers within. So you have a Provider One environment with multiple security management servers. I mean, for a lab, we're not doing that. If you're looking at Provider One stuff, then absolutely, that's where you want to be. So we're going to go with that here. That. It's a distributed deployment of a management server. You then need another VM with your gateway where you would do that. For us, we're running a standalone deployment, so we're running both of those products. Really key here. Um, if you wanted to, you could easily run two VMs with one core and you know one gig of memory. It, it you know it's it depends on how you want to do it. That's a really good way of doing things because you do all your SIP configuration, all that type of stuff. But for us, I just want to get going as quick as possible. I'm confident in my ability to build a gateway and a management box, but if you want to see that, I'm more than happy to, to do that. Clustering, I'm only building one file and management server is primary because there is only one. Download contracts, shouldn't really matter. Admin name, I'm gonna do one. Firewall admin. Password. Uh I will set a good one again. It's just habit to use good passwords, but um, yeah, you can set really what you want there. GUI clients, so if you want to lock down a particular subnet, so what I could do is say, okay, allow just this machine or just this network, so I could define the um, 172.16.168.0 slash 24 subnet, or range of IPs. I'm just going to allow any. It's a lab and it's private to me, so I'm fairly confident it's it's okay. I'm going to untick that. I'm not really bothered about providing the product experience for them. Um, finish and yes. This is essentially where the checkpoints configure themselves. So it's configuring the products we've selected. So our management server and our gateway. Um, once it's done we should be able to log into the web GUI and actually I'll take a quick look around and then that'll be it. Um, not really much else to do. The, the web GUI offers you all your kind of layer 3 stuff, layer 2 stuff, so you can configure your interfaces um, with IP addresses, you can do your routing, you can do your, you know, your VLANs, you can do your port channels, whatever you want. Uh, that is where you would do it from. You do it from this, this, this web GUI. Um, it's key to remember, I think on Checkpoint, when you you can't really not allow Checkpoint communications, so things like for SICK and things like that, they're always allowed by default things like the web access so and also the, the command line access if you try and SSH onto the box and you try and use HTTPS to the firewall if you haven't allowed it in the rule base you, you can't get on so those things you can block it's very key to remember that one of the one, most common things I've seen with, with kind of junior engineers when they're installing it is they forget to put in access rules they'll put a deny rule in and they'll forget to put access rules for themselves so it's just one of those things that you kind of just I don't know those are like your first rules. I always have like, there's always key rules I put on. I put my cleanup rule at the bottom. I put what I call it reduces noise rule. So I get rid of things like um, net BIOS, you know, just crap like that that's going to a broadcast address. If you put yourself a destination which is, you know, 255, 255, 255 and 
you know, the NetBIOS ports of 137 and all that kind of stuff, but you just drop it rather than log it, your logs are a lot clearer, so you'll see genuinely what's allowed, genuinely what's what's denied. Um, Depending on your environment, you know you might need to capture that. So things like PCI, you might need to you, you you need to typically log on every single rule. But for you know most corporate firewalls, the NetBIOS stuff is just is just headache, um, and it counts for millions of logs depending on how big your environment. Um, so that's going through. Um, it's been really quick actually. I'm quite I'm quite impressed. This is a brand new uh, machine, so it's I'd hope it'd be quick. Um, I haven't te I haven't tested this at all before now so I'm kind of glad it worked this is genuine genuinely the first time I've I've run this on this machine um, the only other VM I've got on here is I think Windows 8 8.1 so to be honest I don't really know why um, I'm running that but there we go I just thought I'd give it a try um, let's see how that's getting on that's not too not too bad um, so yeah, hopefully next video I'm going to focus on probably doing a bit more configuration in the web GUI. Um, you know, things things around routing and things like that. Oh, that was pretty quick. It went jump from nothing to, to nearly done. Um, yeah, do some stuff like routing, um, where you can you can download your licenses, things like that. Um, and just quickly give you a quick overview of, of, of the web GUI. Then what I'll do is I'll probably, in fact, thinking about it, I'm on a Mac, so I'm not going to have a smart dashboard. I will use that Windows 8.1 VM to show you smart dashboard. I'll put them on the same net and um, actually show you smart dashboard, log on, start to create a rule base. Um, hopefully what I can do is actually create a rule base that we can then build on. So first I'll include my sort of five default rules of um, blocking the stealth rules, if you like, where you you know you can't access the firewall, um, internet access, all those types of things will go over. Um, probably some of those rules you might think are actually not relevant but most environments they, they tend to come into their own and are actually quite useful um, and then we'll start to look at things like NAT and you know building out a more complex environment with a DMZ and things like that look at anti-spoofing and, and all those kind of cool things but really cover the basic firewall stuff and then what I'd really like to do is, is go into the actual products the blades such as antivirus um, anti-spam and all the kind of cool stuff so that's come up. Let's log in. Somehow I'm gonna get the password right first time. Yep. I don't want to remember anything. Um, boom. So that's up. And that is as easy as it is. It, there is. I'm, I have done nothing other than what I've just shown you. So um, one thing that is interesting, which I didn't tell you, I built the machine just for reference as a other Linux systems. When you select, normally it says what operating system you're running. I selected other Linux, 3.x, 64-bit. This is running as 32. You can actually change that to 64-bit. On doing so, ask for a reboot. Um, it will ha run happily as 32-bit software um, in a 64-bit VM. One thing that's really important to remember, the management server is 32-bit anyway. It's only the firewall that changes to 64-bit. So I actually think it runs in 32-bit anyway. So um, yeah, just a little little fact for you there, and that's really it. And then obviously you've got your configuration. This is the advanced mode. You, you've got basic, but advanced. Here's where you configure your NICs. If you had more, now I'm going to add more NICs later, which all it'll do is require a reboot of the host uh, firewall to get that um, populated with all the interfaces. Um, you can configure all the stuff like your, your static routes and, and all all that kind of stuff, um, management stuff, SNMP, you name it. That's all done from here. Really straightforward really easy to um, to do and also to be honest what's great now all your updates are done from here and it is really straightforward you install the latest agent it will go and get the software updates and it just it just works um, it's probably the only version of software where I'm, I'm genuinely quite confident to use the GUI update I tend to always do it from the command line but actually done it a few times now gone from R77 um, R76 up to R77 using the GUI and it works pretty well so yeah, that's basically it for this one. So if you've got any questions or you want any help or advice, please drop a comment, let me know. But hopefully this is was a slightly better video from a quality point of view. Appreciate it might not cover everything you want but uh, in the first instance, but please let me know. If, and if there's any topics you want to know, um, I can go into them more than, I'm more than happy to do that. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and please uh, give me some feedback. Cheers. Bye-bye.